Welcome subscribers. Welcome new subscribers. Thank you for following us, liking our videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me today. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I'm so sorry. It's been a long time since I've been here. I've been working hard, meeting goals, coming up with ways how to grow, how I can connect with you. Uh, I'm very excited to announce a new platform we're going to be moving to to uh, offer more services for you. And so stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing more virtual services, offering more free readings, uh, offering you more steady empowerment that you can enjoy throughout your day uh, and just feeding you spiritually. So stay tuned about those updates. And again, it's been worth, I promise you, it's been worth the wait because I've really been working hard. So I'm very excited about the other services that I'm going to be able to offer you uh, as we make adjustments and changes. So please stay tuned and I'll be posting those changes here on the channel really soon. Uh, today I wanted to come here with you about a book review. Again, I said I was going to start, we was going to start talking more about psychology and astrology. This book costs about 10 books. 10 bucks. I, I, I forgot where I got it from. I think I got it from Thrift Books, if I'm not mistaken. It costs about 10 bucks. It's called Psychological Astrology, a synthesis of what? Jernigan Psychology and Astrology. It's by Karen uh, Hamaker Zunde. It was a really slow read for me because of the verbiage, especially when it got to the astrology part. I'm not very scientific on that on that area. I need to do more studying in that part. Uh, and it, it was mostly the verbiage that was throwing me off a little bit. But it was this is a really good book, not for beginners. If you're for beginner, I do not recommend this book because of the verbiage. Uh, it was a slow read for me. But there are parts in the book that really jumped out for, uh, for me because I do terror readings. And this book talked about archetypes. Uh, and because I'm interested in psychology, I really understood a lot in kind of connecting the planets and the energies they bring into the consciousness, which I'll talk about more this about this more in the book. Very interesting book. Uh, I think this is very important. Knowing your psychology, knowing how you think, the more you can figure out your mind, the more intuitive messages you, you know, you can tap into the inner wisdom. You can tap into you, the universe, you know, tapping into that because you are the universe. You are a star. Okay, it's a really good book. Uh, it was 200, over 220 pages. It has about eight chapters in it. Let me go over some of the chapters with you. Uh, and we're, I'm going to skip around in this book and talk about a few things in the book, you know, go over a few paragraphs in the book with you. Psychology and Astrology, an introduction. That's chapter one. Yeah. Two, Astrological World of Ideas. Three, Quadrubusi. I can't even, quadruplicities as forms of psychic energy. Uh, that's when they, they talk about um, the way the planets are aligned, all these different forms, they bring out different energies. I thought that was interesting. The way they, they, they break things down with them, plant is different energies are coming from uh, the way they have broke them down. I don't know. It's, 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 very, it's very interesting. Like I said, some of this stuff is, it was over. I was like, wow, you know, it's like, well, I need to study it a little more. Uh, the four elements, psychological types, the zodiac as a path of life. The structure of houses and the psychic structure of the individual. 
seven planets as symbols of archetypal typical psychic drives. Eight growth and development. That I like that. I mean, I really it came together for me in eight. Um, but there were some other things that jumped out at, at me as I went throughout the book. I'm going to start on page nine, which is the introduction of psychology and astrology, the introduction. Um, it says, astrology became a symbolic language, language with sufficient vitality to survive right down to our own times. Put my, my vision helpers on here. Hold on, you guys. I got to because the eyes, they get a little out of whack sometimes. So, put these on. Help me keep up. Okay. With enough flexibility developed with the race itself, its ancient frame, frame its ancient framework seems to agree wonderfully with the modern psychological concepts, especially those used in the theories of eminent psychiatrist Pro Professor John. Thanks to his own insights to those of his many followers, it is possible to give, up, give an updated interpretation to much of the content of the astrological symbols. All the more as so, Jung's findings and intuitions often hark back to the original experiences of mankind enshrined by so many cultures in their scriptures, tradition, mythologies, and fa uh, fairy tales. Over and over again, certain motives seem to be given prominence in the legends, nursery stories of the world literature. Literature. These motives seem to be almost universal, as we often find even today in fantasies and dreams, in the hallucination of fever patients and the delusions of the mentally deranged. Carl Jung sifted through these and many others phenomena for materials with which to construct a working model of human sight. And in doing so, he drew the highly important distinctions between personal consciousness, the personal unconscious, and the collective unconscious. The conscious and the unconscious are two complementary spheres displaying opposite characteristics. They balance one another, so to speak. But Jung's opinions on the unconscious were completely different from the, those of his former teacher, Sigmund Freud. In Frost's view, the unconscious mind is where the material repressed by the individual is stored, and he gave the name preconscious to the layer of the mind from which we have instant recall. Jung's term personal unconscious essentially covers both of the concepts of Frost, his preconscious and his unconscious. In addition, Jung introduced a new expression, collective unconscious, to denote a compartment of the psyche whose contents are not specific to our individual egos or the result of the personal experience, but derived from the inherited structure of the brain, from the inherited potential of psychic functioning in general. It is conceived of as incorporating all types of psychic reaction and all human experiences right from the very beginning of mankind. So he was very in touch with uh, there was a part of our mind that was already connected with other humans around us. It was a collective conscious where all consciousness derives from. There's a universal consciousness. That's the way I looked at it. I interpreted that. Uh, this is the reason for using the word collective. The assumption is made that we are all a part of one. Another, that we share the unconscious mind with all our fellow men within the collective Within, within the collective unconscious, the source of those motives which the whole world has in common, motives which ha we have already seen, can also play an important role in the individual psyche. How this process takes place is explained by Jung and detailed analysts of the collective unconscious. I thought that's very, because I work a lot with that when I'm working with the tarot. And that's what the tarot is. When you see the emperor, you I, I automatically uh, connect it with the grandfatherly figure, uh, the uh, the zodiac sign Aries. I, I, I automatically connect it because I know that's that's the archetype uh, of uh, that 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 symbol. It's a grandfather archetype symbol. When I see the empress, 
You know, a lot of people see a young, young, a young lady, but when I see the empress, I see the grandmotherly figure, the, the nurturing figure, Mother Earth figure. That's what I see uh, when I see when I'm when I'm looking at that. So that archetype. You know, uh, I, I can relate a lot with this because of the tarot and the archetypes. It just all comes together for me like that. Uh, just as we inherit our physical characteristics from our parents and our ancestors, so we inherit archetypes as the material of the coll collective unconscious and inheritance we share with the rest of mankind. The meaning of the word ar archetype has been much disputed because in the, in the main, its true significance has not been grasped. Jung himself offered the following definition, and he gives his definition. We have seen the collective unconscious as the repository of all archetypes contains every human experience from man's earliest days. It is certainly no storehouse of the dead material, quite the reverse. It's, it forms the matrix of our behavior and reactions. Nevertheless, we are still in the dark to the origin of the arch archetypes. Their nature remains inscrutable. We can get to know them only when we are they are manifested as images in our sights. But we must not take we no, must not make the mistake of thinking that these images are the archetypes themselves. So making them real. The, again, these are symbols, these are our minds speaking to us, um, giving us clues. Archetypes are governing principles in the hidden part of the human sight. They are force fields, force centers, which serve a marshal whatever items sink into the unconscious. Their activities lie outside our field of consciousness, but exert a great effect on what we, we do or refrain from doing. Indeed, says Jolanda Jacoby, all life expressions, insofar as they are of general human typical sort, rest on the archetypal, archetypal foundation no matter where they manifest themselves, on the biological, the psychobiological, or the mental level. So I thought that was that was a very interesting read to me. Let me go on. I don't want to make this long for you. But this book was really breaking down, too, because I want to go into the astrology side of it. I got some stuff marked in there, and I think this is page 142. And what chapter is 142? 142, Planets and Symbols of the Archetypal Psychic Drives. I, I guess, you know, I, I guess that's a, those are the, who, I was really in the archetypal. I just noticed that pattern in me. That was a good read for me. Chapter 7 was a good read for me. And uh, Chapter 8 was a good read for me. I guess it was the information that I was looking for to connect things together. This is page 142. Let's see here. Uh, in a social sense, each instinctive behavior pattern has its positive and its negative sides. But while the instinct for survival can make a thief, it can also make a statement of, of the man who outgrows his ambitions. We see, therefore, that each planet has several sides to it. As far as these instinctive behavior patterns are concerned, it can express itself on different levels. It is extremely important not to look blindly at the external appearance in psychological astrology, but to try and see what patterns can underlie the multiplicities of apparently unconnected forms of expression and behavior. Just as a thief impulse to steal and the ambition of the great statesman may be traced back to the instinct for survival, so can planets. To which the next section, okay, I'm not going to read it. Display totally different and sometimes apparently opposite effects, which nevertheless have common cause. According to, psychology, according to the psychology of Carl Jung, there is stored in the collective unconscious of the human sight the whole man's experimental knowledge and patterns of behavior. And an account of this theory has already been given. Each individual alleged to share in that store from an astrological point of view. He may add that all that is contained in the planets when they are treated as symbols, as primitive patterns, and present in every horoscope, 
And so we all have everything belonging to the planets in our horoscopes or sites, whichever way you look at it. But the specific pattern formed by the planets in the natal horoscope reveals how various planets play part in the life of the individual. What is shown, in other words, is those patterns of instinctive behaviors which are accessible to the individual. The psyche is a complex whole. Nothing in it functions independently. Everything is interconnected. This is strictly true of the planets in a horoscope, too. There are numerous possibilities for relationship between the planets, such as aspects, rulerships, etc. Therefore, no single planet interpreted as an isolated element. The whole horoscope must always be taken into consideration in determining the role field in the site by each factor. And within that total picture, the astrologer must allow for the three stages of development of instinctive behavior inherited in each planet. At present, it is impossible to say which stage of development is instinctive behavior will apply in a given horoscope. If we could do so, we could invariably tell the difference between the horoscope of man and an ape, say. So what they're saying here, and I know that was a lot, what they're saying here is when I was reading, the understanding that I got out of it is that, yeah, you, uh, I may be a Sagittarius, but to fully develop and grow spiritually, my horoscope, my, my zodiac has to go into those planets and also experience energies of those all uh, other zodiacs as well. Uh, zodiacs as well, like you have Sagittarius going into Gemini. You know, you'll have that that going on. That's really what that means. I'm having a chance to tap into those energies, or those energies may have a chance to affect my behavior and psychology. Uh, that's when you see a lot of changes going on when you start to go into those uh, other zodiacs there be uh, other signs of development something else that you're going on that might be unique uh you know to you at that specific time just because uh i'm a sagittarius doesn't mean i have to experience just that sagittarius energy i can experience some gemini energy i can experience some taurus energy uh all for my development all for my development and growth i hope that made sense to you because uh, they talk about that a little bit back here. Like I said, this is a very interesting book, a very slow read. I think I think it's a very, uh, you know, it was slow for me because uh, I really wanted to understand more about the psychology and astrology uh, of humans, you know, how it all ties together, which I, I do a lot of it in my work. But looking at it from a scientific point, I wanted to look at it from a spiritual scientific point too. Very interesting. I do recommend the read. Uh, and I'm going to be coming here. I got a few more other books that talk a little bit about, about this. So I'm going to be coming here uh, as well, talking about this a little bit more about my discoveries on this. I think it's really juicy stuff. Something that we need to know as we spiritually grow and develop. Uh this was chapter eight. Like I tell you, this is one of my favorite chapters here of growth and development. The, I, I thought it was interesting to me because they, they're using the Kabbalah. They talked about a Kabbalah in here and he talks about a Kabbalistic legend. Page, what's this, 180. In his analytical psychology, Dr. Gerhard Adler refers to an old Kabbalistic legend on the making of man, a legend which recounts that a moment of procreation, God calls the germ of future being before him to decide the terms of the existence of the new soul, whether it will be male or female, rich or poor, wise or foolish, or so on. Only one decision is left open, whether the person will be righteous or an evildoer, for everything lies in the hands of God except the fear of God. The legend goes on to describe how the soul pleads not to be sent from the world to this, but God answers the world to which I am now sending you is better than the world in which you were, were in when I 
created you. I destined you for the earthly life. On speaking these words, God entrusts the soul to the angel in charge of souls in the outer in the other world. The angel reveals to her all the secrets of the other world and conducts her through heaven and hell. When she is born in this world, however, the angel extinguishes the light of, of knowledge and the soul is inserted into an earthly sheet without the great secret, which she will have to win back. Adler interprets the first part of this legend as follows. Each of us is given a certain lot in life, for each is a path appointed. But whether or not a man will fulfill his destiny instead of going his own way is in his own hands. The fear of God, the recognition of the divine destiny of man, is different for each one of us. For each one, the goal is fixed, but the way to it is attained. Attainment is a matter of the individual. Truly, this is a deep answer to the age-old problem of free will. Very deep. That is very deep. The agreement between the Kabbalah, psychology, and astrology on this essential point is quite striking. From an astrological point of view, man is even less of a blank sheet at birth than the Kabbalistic legend represents him to be. Indeed, in babies a few, da few days old, certain features present their horoscopes are already quite apparent. The child is born with a specific psychic structure, has a unique set of characteristics, which is mirrored in the individual constellation of the natal horoscope. The said horoscope contains his possibilities, limitation, and difficulties from the birth onwards. The problems he will encounter, the things that give him sorrow or joy, the lessons he must learn, the gifts which will bear fruit. In short, everything is present in potential form, but it is, it is the individual himself who will decide whether or not the possibilities would be realized. So I thought this is a very good uh, book for me. I hope this book review was insightful. I hope it was educational for you because it really was for me. Uh, please you know, please stay updated. I'm going to be talking more about psychology and astrology. I really, you know, helping you put the put the two together. I like I said, I put a lot of this stuff together when I wrote the book Christ Consciousness. This book confirmed a lot of the things when I wrote the book uh, Christ Consciousness. But there's a lot of verbiage verbiage in here. So if you're a beginner into this, I probably wouldn't recommend this book. You know, but if you've been studying the archetypes and you've been putting it together and you want to type, you know, you're tapping into the collective unconscious and you want a scientific reason, psychological reason for what really is the universal consciousness, what it really is a collective unconscious, what really is it? Uh, this is a really good book for, for that. So thank you for being here with me today. Uh, stay updated about the changes and adjustments that we're going to be having in the future. Future light and love. Namaste, loved ones. May the ancestors be with you.